Welcome back to our roundtable discussions on uh, Addison's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm Dori Craggy, and thank you for joining us. Um, we are at the end of April, which we had hoped to be the, the kind of reopening of our state. And unfortunately, it's been announced that we will be going through this for another month. So as May 1st, approaches with some new guidelines for all of us to follow. I'm here with Bill Hayden, the director of the police department to discuss some of the changes and really some of the confusion that these changes keep bringing about because everyone seems to interpret these a little bit differently. Um, but before we talk about that, Bill, I wanted to check in with you on how your staff is doing because unfortunately they're going about their day-to-day -day duties and now all of these things on top of it and the stress of they don't get to social distance the no. way you know we kind of have the luxury of doing. So how are they doing with yeah, all Yeah, at times of this? they don't get to social distance, especially when it's like a spontaneous issue that pops up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you may not even have a, that split second to put on a mask, but for the most part, the officers are, uh, they use a lot of good common sense. We haven't had one issue of COVID in the entire police force. Um, like I said, they're using good common <laughs> sense. Um, they're using their uh, personal protective equipment. Mm -hmm. um, the village has been good enough to supply us with everything we needed. We have, we're, we're well stocked. Um, so everything's been going very well. What you might see on the street though is, is uh, typically a traffic stop. Traffic stops for a lot of guys are different now. You know, they used to walk up to the window mm -hmm. and look in and talk to the driver within a couple feet, three feet sure. area. Now they're standing way back. Sometimes they're standing a half a lane back and they may ask, hold up your driver's license and they'll snap a picture of it and then zoom in and look at the driver's oh, license. Oh, interesting. So um, traffic crashes now. Uh -huh. A lot of times they don't invite the uh, two parties in the traffic crash back into the police car. Okay. That was standard in the past, so we could mm -hmm. fill out all the forms. Mm -hmm. Now everyone stays in their own car. We help them social distance. We social distance. We do everything from our car while they stay in their cars. So some things have changed. I think moving forward, we're going to see other changes mm -hmm. in law enforcement. But uh, no, thanks. Every, everybody's uh, doing good. They're handling it well. Uh, it's got to yeah. be stressful, though. They're, they're dealing with people, like you said, they can't avoid it, and then they have to go home to their families, and they're trying to keep they their do. families safe. So the stress level is... is it's, it's been good. i I got to give a shout-out to the Edison Fire Department. Um, those guys, as soon as this issue broke, told us not to enter um, scenes where people are sick. Mm -hmm. So we'll drive by, we'll be in the area. They have been great. Um, they haven't called for our assistance, and typically that's one of the calls where we would have been inside on. Mm -hmm. And we're not anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think that's helped tremendously, that's is that great. we're not in those scenes. So We hear nationwide the, uh, the increase in um, domestic situations because yes. everybody's kind of cramped together. Have we seen that in our community? A little bit. Uh, not as much as you'd think in Addison. Uh, people have been uh, really good. Our actual costs for service have gone down. Mm -hmm. uh, believe it or not, people are behaving during a pandemic. Oh, that's great. Um, there are silver <laughs> linings to everything, I guess. Uh -huh. and, um, and when we have those calls, we ask them to step outside. Hey, would you please, would you mind stepping outside and talking to us? Okay, that's great. So we keep our social distance, mm -hmm. even on those calls. About 90 to 95 percent of our calls now are telephone calls. Oh, good. And people are happy with it. In the past, it was, no, I want to see a police officer right here at my door. Mm -hmm. uh, people are happy to make that phone call mm -hmm. and uh, do the report over the phone. Great. So it's, it's, been, uh, it's been changes moving forward. It mm -hmm. has been uh, positive in a lot of ways. Good. Well, um, as I mentioned, uh, May 1st brings about some changes and depending on where people are getting the information and they're getting it from everywhere, there's, there's a lot of confusion. Um, so let's first go over um, some of the good things. Okay. There are some things that are going to be allowed to open up um, as May 1st approaches. T let's talk about some of those. What kind of changes are we gonna see in the business community in town? Okay, well first, outdoor recreation. Mm -hmm. uh, people are itching to get outdoor. 
and uh, and I believe the the governor uh, saw that. So outdoor re recreation is going to change. He's going to open up some of the state parks. Um, exactly what their rules and regulations are, you know, we don't know. So I suggest that you go to the website of the Illinois Department of Natural Resources, mm -hmm. and they'll let you know which parks, what the regulations are, things like that. Uh, golf is going to be permitted finally. Yay! Yes. Uh, a lot of people are happy for that. And um, our own park district has a facility, Links and Tees, out on West Lake Street. Um, I was talking to the director uh, this morning, and she said they're going to open up from 6, it was, no, excuse me, it was 7 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the difference. In the past, you could just go to the park district, to Links and Tees, mm -hmm. and, you know, get a bucket of balls or hit the, hit the course. Um, the driving range is not open. Uh, but the golf course will be, and you actually have to call ahead of time now for tee time. Right. So there's there's a there's a little bit difference there. And I understand it's not foursomes for right now; it's twosomes. You're right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, greenhouses, um, garden centers, nurseries—they'll all be considered essential businesses, and they're going to open up. Great. Um, of course, they they have to comply with social distancing, mm -hmm. even though it's an outdoor uh, type of facility. Um, they still have to comply with social distancing. And we have Shem and Nursery yeah. down at Lake and Lombard. Mm -hmm. And I drive by there frequently, and they are, they are ready. They're yeah. stocked. So please frequent uh, Shem and. Um, Good and like, time to mention local businesses, yes. especially whenever possible to support our Addison businesses right now more than ever. Absolutely. Yeah, all the mom and pops, everybody needs help mm -hmm. right now. So. But like I said, you know, even though these businesses are opening up, um, they all have to maintain a social distance. So if you can't maintain at least a six foot separation, then you must have a face covering. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what some, oh, animal grooming services are gonna open up now. Mm -hmm. So you can go and get your pet uh, groomed. Real important. But, <laughs> but you, you can. You and I, no, no. Right. So uh, the retail stores are gonna open back up. Uh, but that's just for online and curbside pickup. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, of course, um, like I said, and I want to I keep repeating myself, sorry about that, but um, you have to maintain social distancing. You have to cover your face. Let's talk about those. We hear the word mask a lot. In fact, as we were talking before the interview, yeah. you corrected me. First, let's talk about when. Um, my own daughter went for a walk the other day and, and wore a mask, and I said, you don't have to do that. She said, oh, yeah, 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 you do. When do people need to cover their face and when don't they? Um, you must cover your face when you cannot maintain a six-foot social distance uh, area. So if you're going so, out for a walk, you're walking your dog, you're going for a run, you don't have to cover your face you as long as to. you're not right next to someone. Correct. If you're driving in your car. Um, I see that a lot, yeah. actually. You don't have to wear a mask. Okay. If you're outside on that sidewalk and you're walking all by yourself or you're walking with family members. Mm -hmm. Your family members don't need to wear a face covering um, okay. if you're all walking together within that six-foot distance. But if you start to encounter other people, um, the executive order would like you to cover up. Okay. Now, what about indoors? Indoors. That's, that's the change. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, the good and the bad, right? I mean, we want to get the economy going, things like that. I think the, the governor recognized, and I, I know the mayor's all over this. Every single day, I hear him talking about it. We need to get the local economy going. Exactly. So one of the steps that they are taking in the executive order was that... Um, Grocery stores, things like that, um, they're going to continue uh, to remain open. The bars, restaurants, not yet, but the difference is you have to uh, wear a face covering now when you go to a public place. Mm -hmm. Public place could be um, a, an indoor location, like a grocery store, mm -hmm. that's open to the public. Mm -hmm. So you and I, were not from the same family. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we're going to go to Caputo's at Lake and Mill mm -hmm. or Jewel across mm -hmm. the street. I'm just trying to plug a few of our local. But anyways, when we go in, starting May 1st now, and then actually I saw some stores actually started it now, mm -hmm. you have to wear a face covering. And they can stop you at the door and say, I'm yes, sorry. They yes, they can. The governor's executive order is mandating the stores to follow that procedure. Mm -hmm. So I am sure they will 
They will stop you at the door. Uh, they don't want to jeopardize um, their licensing, but more importantly, they don't want to jeopardize the health of the public. Exactly, or their so, employees. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, good point. So they probably will stop you at the door. Mm -hmm. um, they're gonna try and maintain social distancing. There's talk about one-way aisles. Mm -hmm. uh, when you go to the cashier and you see it now, people are standing further and further away from each other. A lot other. of them have those big stickers on the ground on the now, which is helpful, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yes, you are going to have to um, cover your face. So, so now uh, resident says, well, I can't get a mask. Okay, we're going to help you out there. Okay. Um, so let's talk about what, what you can do. if you. Okay. You, all right. Um, <laughs> you brought visual aids. <laughs> we did. Okay, the best mask, uh -huh. in, in, in the executive order, it's called a face covering. So there is a, there mm -hmm. is a difference there but we'll, we'll go over those degrees of face masks to face coverings. Mm -hmm. So you hear all the talk in public about the N95. Mm -hmm. It is the Cadillac of the face masks. Mm -hmm. It stops COVID from uh, penetrating the mask mm -hmm. and entering your uh, system. The N95 is uh, this little guy right here. Mm -hmm. And you can see somewhere over here, there's um, a letter and a number and it says N95. Mm -hmm. They're very easy. They just slip on with, uh, with the elastic bands. They go right over your head. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it tightens up around your, your jaw and your nose. This will stop COVID from penetrating the mask. And that ideally is meant for first responders. First responders, um, the fire departments have them. Mm -hmm. um, the hospitals have, have exactly. them, they use them. Mm -hmm. So that's what you'll see the police officers in is, is the N95. And in that fact, is not what the governor is requiring us to wear to go to Walmart, for You instance. are so right. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Now, the face covering, the different degrees, okay? This is just a, a thin uh, face covering. You could see it's, it's a homemade type mm -hmm. of device, and it would just go over your face and around your ears. Mm-hmm. And this is good enough to go in any public place now. And it, and it goes so well with your uniform. It's <laughs> great, yeah. Um, here's another one, different type. We don't care what they are made out of, <clears throat> what they look like. This one is very thin, mm -hmm. so it's easier to breathe through. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's a little bit thicker. Serves the purpose very, very, very well. And it's a little bit more stylish, right? Yeah. So, and it's the same thing, hooks around the ears. And then there's, um, there's another, there's a paper mask. This is also, believe it or not, it's an N95. It's not the same as this one. Mm -hmm. It's a foldable. Okay. So it's more in the lines of this. Mm -hmm. uh, adds a little bit more comf comfort around the ears. Okay. And then, of course, um, you could wear a uh, bandana, a buff, um, a gaiter. Mm -hmm. You could put your nose inside your T-shirt. Um, you could wear... Um, something like this is is just now this one was a baby's blanket and wow. i brought it in because someone i saw them wearing something similar to this uh -huh. and they just tied it around their their uh, head and neck and, and it served the purpose exactly and there's and there's videos everywhere on now on how to turn a bandana into, into one of these, you just need a couple hair ties. And, face yeah, covering. Exactly. That's it. So that's the difference now. So if I'm shopping at Jewel or Caputo's and I see someone not wearing something over their face, what should I do? Okay. Um, the first thing that I would do is uh, approach the store manager. Um, it is required. Um, I know, I can say with confidence that our local stores want to follow the executive order. Uh, we've been talking about it. They're very conscientious about it, and they want to protect the health of the public. So if I were a customer and someone in there was not wearing a face covering, I would approach the manager. I'd bring it to his attention because 99.9% .9 of the time, the manager is going to take control of that situation, mm -hmm. talk to the customer, and either make them put it, put it on or, or tell them to leave the premises. And if that doesn't happen? If that doesn't happen, then... Uh, the police should be called. Okay. And then we will respond. We will, of course, put our face coverings on, mm -hmm. and we will go inside and we will handle that situation. And we're going to encourage and educate people to wear these. You know, we're all in this together. 
there are many different perspectives from one end of the spectrum to the other. Mm -hmm. Come on, let's just use a little bit of common sense in the middle here. Let's get through this pandemic and move on so we can all be happy. When else should someone be contacting the police department in this situation? Like you said, we're all getting a little stir crazy. We all want to go outside, but at the same time, when, when you see a bunch of people in one place, you start to get nervous. So when is it appropriate to maybe be a little patient, give it some time and, and when should they be calling? Okay, if you see a number of people, well, let's take a a public setting first. Mm -hmm. Uh, People are outside um, at the park. Uh, We've received calls. Uh, A bunch of boys were playing basketball together. They were younger kids. Mm -hmm. Now, younger kids, they're they're not going to social distance. Mm -hmm. They they don't quite get, you know, they're invincible. Yeah, of course. So they got their basketball, they ran over to the court, and they started playing. So um, a neighbor called. We responded. We talked to the kids. Uh, helped them understand the mm-hmm. seriousness of the issue. They took their ball and they uh, they went home. Mm-hmm. Um, that's all it took. Um, you know, we've received calls about people gathering, and we found out that they were members of all the same family. Yeah, that's the thing. If the, if you're quarantined together, it's okay to be outside together. Yes, and in fact, you see more and more and more families together mm-hmm. in public places now, which is another you know that silver lining kind of yeah, issue. Yeah, exactly. So. In that situation, um, no, they can be outside. They don't have to be uh, masked up or have a face covering on. Mm -hmm. They're all from the same family. They live in the same house. Um, They don't have to social distance. They can be together. Mm -hmm. We've received calls about, um, uh, well, there are a dozen cars parked in the driveway, and I know all those people are inside the house. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, we, of course, knocked on the door. Mm -hmm. and we educated them, uh, but we cannot regulate social distancing inside a private residence, inside someplace private that is not open to the public. Okay. We're not allowed to do that, Mm -hmm. and uh, so in that case, we'll bring it to their attention, we'll educate them Mm -hmm. and encourage them, and uh, and then we move on. Mm -hmm. So that's how we handle it. Exactly. So you're, you're saying be patient, and then if you're not sure, give a call. Should give they be call. calling 911 or call the nine, non-emergency number? They can call 911. It will go um, right to the Addison Consolidated Dispatch Center. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, when they do that, the dispatcher is going to have a couple questions. Sure. You know, is it indoors? Is it outdoors? Do you know if they're family members? Um, you know, uh, other issues, they'll, they'll try and explain over the phone, well, you know, did they just get there? Mm-hmm. Um, does it look like they're going to maintain that position for a long time? Because you can imagine, this is not an emergency call. Uh, most likely, uh, people, especially during this time, it's it's a couple of neighbors. I've seen it myself. They've bumped into each other on the sidewalk, and they're taking a couple minutes to catch up because they haven't talked <laughs> exactly. in six weeks. Uh-huh. Uh, but then they move on. Right. So, um, you know, it's 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 tough right now to be the the, the mask police and the sure. face covering police. We, we don't want to do that. We're just looking for cooperation. And, uh, and I got to say, um, our calls uh, for, to address those type of issues have been very, very, very limited. Good, good. Now, do you anticipate that kind of ramping up as the weather starts getting nicer and, and so people are out, so they're seeing more of this stuff go on or you know, do you think everybody's kind of getting the hang of this and hopefully there's a finish line in sight here? The finish line, that's the important detail. Um, yes, it is ramping up. Um, a couple of days ago when it was low 70s, mm-hmm. people were out all over the place, mm-hmm. just all over. Um, and we, we really didn't get any calls about social distancing. Good. It was nice, but um, we saw traffic was much heavier. Um, a number of the parking spaces in the public places mm-hmm. were all taken up. Cars were parked right next to each other. So you knew a lot of people were in that park. Uh-huh. Um, so it is ramping up. Okay. Uh, we think that we may get a few more calls uh, mm-hmm. from people about social distancing, but you know, we'll, we'll go out and investigate. Well, the, the last duty that, um, that your department has been handling is outreach to seniors, making sure that they're yes. educated, making sure that they're healthy, 
um, making sure that they're not getting you know, a little stir crazy on their own because some of them are living on their own. Um, and I'm sure that they've had some questions about this. What, what's going on with the seniors right now and in your outreach to them? Um, actually, that senior program, the outreach during the pandemic is, was the mayor's program. Mm -hmm. um, he directed the police department to initiate phone calls to all the seniors mm -hmm. in town. So we've been doing that now a couple of weeks and uh, every, I believe it's every three days, mm -hmm. uh, we call them, uh, see how they're doing. So um, the next initiative that he wanted to reach out and help them with was the, the face covering. Uh, many of them don't have it. Many of them have been inside. Some of them are, are vulnerable. Sure. So they haven't gone out to shop for these or get them. You try and get them online, a lot of times they're out, although mm -hmm. the supplies are starting to return. Um, so his, his newest initiative is uh, call the seniors again, find out if they have a face covering, and if not, um, they will get one. Um, so we have, we have the supplies for that. It's not an N95 mask, but it will be a face covering. It will right. um, provide them um, and help them to comply with the governor's executive order. So, uh, like you mentioned, we're, we're reaching out to the seniors about this. What if, what if they're not on this call list? Why, what if they haven't been getting these calls from the police department? What should they do? Good point. Um, they can call a crime prevention officer. Her name, her name is Officer uh, Melvina Sabansky, mm -hmm. and her phone number is 630-693-7919, 630-693-7919, Melvina Sabansky, and um, she will have these face coverings available. You can give her a call, you can get on the list. One will be delivered right to your house. We'll maintain the social distancing, we'll mm -hmm. drop it off and then we'll leave and you can open up the door and, and take it. Um, so um, they, can, they can definitely call in and, and get one. Great, well so. thank you so much for being with us, Bill, and uh, helping educate us while you're educating everyone else in Addison. Dory, th there is one other issue I, I, I thought maybe we'd touch on. Okay. And that is, and you were directly involved with it, and that is the uh, outdoor activities for June. Oh, we, yes, we met, uh, skipped over that. That's, that's, yeah, that's an unfortunate byproduct yes, of all yes, of it this. Yes, yeah. um, But yes, well, you go You're ahead. You're gonna let me do it. Sure, okay. <laughs> you deliver the bad news. Um, you know, um, because the, the, this issue, the pandemic is moving on, um, you probably hear across the nation, sports games are most likely gonna be canceled. Your big metropolitan areas are canceling all their big concerts. So uh, what the Village of Addison has done so far, they've taken the step to cancel the outdoor June activities. So um, that's it for right now, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. um, and we are then, keeping our fingers crossed for the rest. You. We'll yeah. assess as we move forward, right? A absolutely. Okay. So um, for more information about um, those cancellations, uh, clarification on uh, face coverings, anything COVID-19 related, we encourage you to visit the Village of Addison website, addisonadvantage.org. There is a tab COVID-19 up at the top with lots of links uh, to information. Also download uh, the Village of Addison's free mobile app, Addison Connected, that also has all of that information. And of course, um, uh, follow us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, all of those things will get the information to you one way or another. Um, for urgent emergency information, we also encourage you to sign up for code red notifications on the website. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Dori Kragi.